Hi Stampers, it's Jackie Ball Hayes from Clump and Stampers. Today's video is a little bit different. So if you're one of my followers that watch my videos every week, I want to explain a little bit why it's different so you don't wonder what I'm talking about on some of those. And if you're brand new to me, this is not my typical video, so make sure you watch the other ones. This one's a little bit different because it's actually three videos that I put together to into one video about oh, I don't know six weeks ago a month ago I can't even remember when we did and I say we and it's me and a couple of other of my Stampin' Up! leader friends we did an online retreat for all of our teams there's five of us we call ourselves creative eight we're not in each other's teams whatsoever but we've joined together to do a lot of fun stuff with our downlines combined so one of the things we do is a quarterly online retreat so our demonstrators get treated to anywhere between three and five days of just tons and tons of fun stuff online, especially for them. Well, I wanna share with you today the three projects that I shared with during this online retreat. Now they got a ton more, because all five of us shared a ton of stuff. Actually, I shared more than these three, but I wanted to share these three because they use, I gotta double check the name, a Wish for Everything bundle. It's a great, versatile, all around greeting set. You've got tons of greetings and you've got coordinating dies. And so I made three different projects that I shared on this video and I did lots of tips with each one, but when you watch the video, you'll hear me say, I'll be back in a little while with another one. Well, I'm gonna go right into the other one because I spliced all the videos together. I've kind of, and I might refer a couple of times in the video to the retreat or congratulations on earning it or whatever. So just ignore that because I've got tips for making all three of my cards. Now, I don't give any dimensions or anything in it because these were kind of geared towards demonstrators. But what I did, because I did it for them, I'm going to share it with you as well. I have a written tutorial for all three cards. Have all the supplies listed, have the dimensions and step-by-step -step instructions. So follow the link that's down in the description of the video over to the website where I'll have pictures of these along with downloadable project sheets or tutorials, whatever you want to call them, for all three of the cards. So that's why this video is a little bit different. It might sound kind of funny the way I'm talking but just remember I'm talking to my team during it for a special retreat that that they earn this quarter but the information is great as far as the three cards that I made so without further ado I'm going to add this intro to th those three videos that I put together and get it uploaded for you guys I hope you like the projects I'll talk to you again soon have a stamp happy day hello hello my friends it's Jackie I have three different cards I'm gonna share with you over the next couple of hours, all using our featured stamp set bundle, A Wish for Everything. Now by now, you know this is what we're all using. I've got three different projects and I tried to kind of incorporate different stamps with them. You know, the beauty of this, it's one of those stamp sets that you could just pull out to go with anything. So with my three projects, I'm gonna kind of space them out over the next few hours. I'll share a quick video tip with each one for you, hopefully teach me a couple of tricks, not only for making each particular card, but for your stamping in general. So here's our first one, Happy Mother's Day. Now keep in mind, this is one of those cards you could really put any words on there, but I chose to use the Healing Hug stamp set because, you know, initial glance, you look at this, it just says, get well. Well, I love this set, the images are gorgeous, but remember, you can add any other greeting to it to make cards for all different occasions. Now, I have a couple tips for you to share. We're using Crush Curry, and we're gonna just talk about the rose here for a second. As you know, this is a distinctive stamp, very, very detailed. And I know some of you guys have struggled that when you ink these up and you stamp with them, well, that one's not too, too bad, but you don't get all the detail. So I have a trick, I call it my spoon trick. Whenever I have these distinctive or very detailed stamps, I like to take just a spoon and I push the ink off to the side. So we can just push it that way, push it this way. The ink is really staying in the pad. It'll eventually all migrate to the middle, but let's just wipe some of this off. Um, now you'll see the difference when I stamp Look at how much lighter that is, and you just get that detail. So for our image on our rose here, I actually stamped it twice. So I stamped the first one, and then I did a little technique called masking. Now, all I did was I stamped on a scrap paper, I've used this over and over, stamped it on scrap paper, cut it out, 
And now when I stamp my second rose, I'm going to cover up my image, but notice how when I cover it up, I'm, you can still see a little bit there because if you cover it completely, you're going to get what I like to call a ghosting line. You know what? Let's just for kicks. Let me show you what I mean. Because our tendency when we're masking is to cover it up completely. So if I cover up that whole image really well like that, and then I come and stamp, that's what I call the ghosting line, which we don't like. So you can see over here where I left a little bit of that first one showing, this one stamped right up next to it. Now let's go back to our card. You can see I stamped the two. I continued to mask as I added the leaves on there, did my little spoon trick on those leaves as well. And then after I stamped all my images on here, and I don't know if you can see on here, I ran it through the Subtles embossing folder. That's my favorite. Anytime I feel like a card's a little flat, needs a little bit more, Subtles embossing folder is awesome. You just wanna do it after you've stamped so that you get your clear image. Cut out my mother's embossed happy and day, put it together. Now on my ribbon here, I wanna show you a little trick as well. What I did, cause I kinda like it on the corner, I just took a piece, after I adhered this to the basic black, I took a ribbon like so, we're just making believe here, and I just cut it about that long and I taped it, I just used scotch tape to the back of my card. Then I came back and you can see I took another piece, I fed it underneath this piece that was taped and then tied a bow there. Otherwise, it would be really hard to try to wrap this around the corner because it'd want to all slide off. But that's how, I mean, it looks like it's wrapped around and tied in a bow, but I did it the simple way. Added a couple rhinestones, and then I made the inside pretty as well. I just stamped another rose, added another greeting there from our stamp set, and put some layers. Now remember, I'll have the tutorial for you to download for this card, so it'll give you all the sizes, but I just wanted to share those tips with you as far as the spoon trick with distinctive stamps, as well as masking tips that I hope you can use in other stamping as well. So I hope you love this project. Remember the Wish for Everything stamp set is super versatile. It's perfect to add you know, all different kinds of greetings onto cards that you may not think of. For instance, this was a, well, a get well set. Now we've made a happy Mother's Day card out of it. So I hope you like it. I'll be Hello, my friends. It's Jackie again. I'm back with another card for you. Last time we did happy Mother's Day. This time we're doing happy Father's Day. Now, once again, I'm pulling in a set you may not have used in a while, and that's rooted in nature. Great set. Great greetings on it. I've used this one so much. But another good example of pulling your dies and your wish for everything to just make a different type of card. So we'll make a happy Father's Day card here. Now the tutorial will be posted for you so you can get all the measurements. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, I've been into this make the insides pretty. So you'll notice we've got layers going on the inside. But I do have a tip I wanna share with you to, um, how you can get this brown real easily on the tree. And I just wanna kind of show you, oh, I have shaded spruce here. Um, I guess my sample uses garden green, but same difference. So when you just stamp this tree, yeah, it looks nice. It's a little flat though, in my opinion, because trees aren't completely solid green. We need a little brown here down on this. So what I did is I inked it up garden green. We got shaded spruce here, but then I just used my early espresso marker and I'm gonna come right on top of that green and color some brown. And then I scribble off every once in a while on the scrap paper, get the green off the marker there. Do I have, what do I have? Yeah, early espresso. And then you can come up here and I dabbed a little bit of those um, leaves. But look at the difference now when we stamp this. It just gives it more dimension having some brown there. And then on the card, I actually stamped it three times without re-inking. So again, we've got some depth to those trees. So cut out of early espresso cardstock. The Father's Day, I just stamped it and, you know, in little tiny pieces like this. I just cut with my scissors, just stamp Father's, snip, 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 and we're good to go. Added a greeting again from the same stamp set. So all of our greetings are from that. I just grabbed the tree from Rooted in Nature. So you could grab that tree from anything. But this time I just grabbed the greetings on some designer series paper, keeping it super simple. The one tip I probably should have showed you in my first video, but I'm gonna share with you now, is how I adhere um, my words down. Now I know we have that fine tip glue pen. I'm not a fan of it personally. 
I like, I like to call it my green glue, my Tombow. And what I do is I cut this out and I don't have one cut out to show you. So we're going to just make believe here. But I actually take my Tombow, my green glue. I put a dab of it. You can see on here where I've used it. But I put a dab of it on there and then I take a sponge and I just pick up that glue, take my die cut piece, flip it upside down, dab it on the back side and glue it down. Super easy. Works like a gem. These little silicone craft mats are one of my best friends. And you can see here how you can just take that glue up by rubbing your finger on there to clean it off. So you're gonna get some glue on here, you know, when you're dabbing the back side. So if you're doing multiples, like here, Happy Valentine's Day, just make sure you set it in different spots on here so you don't get glue on the front, but just dab the glue on there and it sticks like a gem. Just added a little banner there. I don't think I did anything on this inside of that one, sorry. But there's our gluing tip for these dies. Um, again, I'll have the tutorial for you guys. You can download it so you'll get all of the measurements.